hear in this glorious story, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so God dies. But a mystery is not a matter to be kept secret. It is the truth that is mysterious in character. Here, let me share with you an experience of a friend of mine who was here tonight. And the one of whom she speaks is here tonight. I will take the one of whom she speaks next Monday. That is her story. But the one who actually had this experience said, when I gave this huge party, and this lady was the honored guest, as I went up to her, she was dressed in this lovely gown, in sort of a purple robe, but they're all in folds. And she wore on her head a golden crown. And I said to her, why, that is exactly like mine. And she took off her crown and gave it to me. I said, come and see. And I took her into a dressing room. And there on the dressing table, was the little figurine, not more than four or six inches tall, with the same folds in that carved onyx. It was a white onyx. But the little crown that she took off her head, that is the big crown, suddenly turned into something not bigger than a ring. And on the head of this little figurine was that identical golden crown. And it was my figurine, and it was my crown. I took off my crown and placed hers on it, and, you, and I said to her, you see, it's exactly the same crown. Now she says, I cannot tell whether I replaced her crown or my crown on it. I only know it was the identical crown. So Paul, in making the statement, he is, does not say a crown. He use, uses a definite article. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. There is only one crown, and all will wear it. When the Son returns from that condition imposed upon him to destroy all gods other than the God. So any belief in a God outside of your own wonderful human imagination, your own wonderful I amness, that's the false God. The whole thing is within the skull of man. And this is the dream of life. And you and I are dreaming it. It is God in man dreaming the dream of life. And the son is executing the dream. So the son goes through hell in this world. He's put him through all the furnaces of affliction. But he always obeyed the father's will. I have found in David a man after my own heart <clears throat> who will do all my will. And he is the son of the self-existent, the living God, called in scripture Jesse, which means Jehovah exists. And one day you're going to have it. When it happens to you, may I tell you, so many within the square are happening now. It's all coming up. Like my friend who had the story of the crown. It's happened to her. The one of whom she had it, it has happened to her. Many are happening. And suddenly it will happen in many. Like hatching out eggs. The hen lays eggs over a period of time. But when the period of hatching comes, they all hatch out within a matter of the same day. Yet it took her days to gather her nest together. And so she puts down a dozen or maybe two dozen eggs, if she's big enough for it. And then one comes out, but don't wait for any 21 days where it took her to gather them together. No, in one 24 hours, they all break and come out. Yet they were all laid at different times. So here, 
in this glorious story unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so God dies. God literally dies in becoming man. And man is his sepulchre. And he so becomes man that he actually unites with man. And man thinks that he is alone. And that no one cares. And yet the one who is suffering all the time is the God in him. And his son who is doing all the work.